Welcome to Young Earth Today 2030 Alpha versus Beta got sci fi. Of course, I'm talking about Science Friday. Uh, today's topic is the Alpha Course booklet. Number three is there a conflict between science and Christianity? Nikki Gumbel. So we'll be referencing that. And you can get a sample if you go to my uh, website, uh, totalyouth.us. That's totalyouth.us and go to the S blog and you'll be able to see uh, the blog on this um, episode of Younger Today and there'll be a lot of links and also uh, check out the video description. So uh, on the cover we see the ocean, the guy by the ocean which is pretty cool and uh, there he is on the ocean, very very cool there. And so uh, in the ocean there's manganese nodules and they form at a certain rate and then if uh, you look at how much there is and then look at the age of the earth it didn't quite match by the standard dating so it's actually a strong argument for a young earth I detail that in my book uh, is a young earth possible so be sure to check that out and uh, uh, there's a graphic inside the book that I really really like it's pretty cool uh, you can see they're throwing different things at each other the scientist is throwing the beaker and then the other guy is throwing stuff. So, uh, if I had to give a contrast to uh, Nikki's book, it would be Coming to Grips with Genesis, edited by uh, my good friend Terry Mortensen and Thane Yuri, and it's really, really good. It kind of answers all the objections that most people have regarding the early chapters of uh, Genesis. Time Magazine had an article, God vs. Science, and it's quoted in Nikki's book. Uh, religion and science always clash according to uh, Paul Bloom that's B-L-O-O-M that's in Gumbel's book on pages uh, 7 and 8 uh, he uh, Bloom that is misrepresented and criticized Ben Carson in uh, the Atlantic uh, Bloom is a psychology prof at the University of Toronto did Bloom ever separate twins connected at the head uh, Ben Carson gave the commencement speech at Emory University in 2012 how about Dr. Bloom uh, I met uh, Dr. Carson in Midland, Texas, uh, when he was running for president. Uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Carson has criticized Darwinism and is sympathetic uh, to younger science. And please meet our mascot for this uh, episode. It's uh, Leo, uh, the Young Earth uh, Science uh, Lion. Leo, the Young Earth Science Lion. There you go. Welcome to the show. So. <clears throat> and this is so what he said uh, Ben Carson that is it's just not there but when you bring up the proponents of Darwinism the evidence that is for evolution supposed evidence best explanation is that well um, it's lost and I find it requires too much faith for me to believe that explanation uh, given that all the fossils found and all the fossilized evidence of the direct step-by-step -step evolutionary progression from simple to complex uh, organisms and from one species to another uh, species uh, shrugging and saying well it was mysteriously lost and we'll probably never find it uh, quote uh, doesn't seem to be a likely satisfying objective or scientific response unquote from Ben Carson's critics of uh, criticism of the evolutionary explanations so uh, 494 faculty uh, students and alumni from Emory University uh, actually made a formal complaint regarding Dr. Ben Carson's uh, selection for the commencement speaker but he did actually go through the commencement and you can uh, catch that online just go to the Emory site and look up Ben Carson Emory University commencement address 2012 and you can see it without any any problem it's an excellent talk so writing in the Atlantic uh, Paul Bloom uh, claims that science is superior to faith quote religion has no equivalent record of discovering hidden truths so why do so many people believe otherwise it turns out that while science and religion are as different as can be folk science and folk religion share deep properties most of us carry in our heads a hodgepodge of scientific views and religious views and they often feel the same unquote so that was from from the Atlantic well is that really true there's an interesting pick in here and uh, it actually has uh, this guy is uh, looking at his Bible and then doing some scientific experiments. So I really like that. That was off of page 11 out of uh, Brother Nicky's uh, booklet. 
So, uh, that's right, you should look at the Bible when you're doing your research. Solomon was a scientist. Dr. Bloom should read 1 Kings 4, 29-34. Modern Science in the Bible by Ben Hobrink is a great resource. And guess what? It was published by Simon & Schuster. Simon & Schuster. So there you go. And I would highly uh, recommend it. So consider the Jewish health regulations. Job said that the earth hangs on nothing. That's Job 26, 7. Hebrews 11, 1 through 3 provides this insight. Quote, now faith is confidence of what we hope for and assurance of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible, unquote. Well, I can't see a cork with my naked eye. In Job 15:15, 15, 15, we learned that even the heavens are not pure in his sight, unquote. That is totally consistent with supernovas, and yet that's contrary to Aristotle's view. Just search Adam's Lost Dream, then click on Astronomy in the topics uh, to the right, and uh, not the search box, and you'll get Bible astronomy for brainiacs for a lot of other uh, cool information that will help you. The remedy uh, to Nikki's book is Six Day Creation. Six Day Creation, and that's Robert Gurnall. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, Gurney. So, sorry about that, Robert Gurney. And uh, that's an excellent work. I would highly recommend it. And guess what is it? What is it? What is it? It is procreation. Procreation. And what do I mean by that? Creation in the traditional sense. It has three elements. Uh, creation in six days. Global flood. Young Earth. It has all three of those. And uh, well, what about this uh, author? And uh, what is his background? It's a short book, also from Britain. And Dr. Gurney was born in Burma and received his medical training in Bristol. He worked in Israel, Tanzania, and Kenya, and was a general practitioner in Devon. Gurney's book is PC, Procreation, Creation in Six Days, Global Flood, Young Earth. So, uh, Nikki brings up the Galileo Affair on page 8. And I, I argue that one can make a biblical case for heliocentrism. And that was in my uh, Bible Astronomy for Brainiacs I just mentioned. So Gumbo rocks with Galileo and noted that, quote, there have been certain periods in the history of Christianity when the church has opposed the results of scientific study. Galileo, the 17th century Italian astronomer, found himself in conflict with the Roman Catholic Church over his discovery that planets revolve around the sun. He was tried by the Inquisition of Rome and ordered to recant and spent the final eight years of his life under house arrest, unquote. That's Gumbo, page 8. I have recommended uh, The Seven Myths, Unbelievable, by Michael Newton Keys. That's Unbelievable, Michael Newton Keys. Uh, the Seven Myths uh, about the history and future of science and religion by Michael Newton Keys. Get it today. Great book, and it talks about Newton. And then there's a video, The Galileo Myth, by Michael Keys, and that's K-E-A-S. And there's also Galileo, Myth versus Reality, with Dr. Rob Carter and Jonathan Sarfati, the chess champ. And uh, that's an excellent video as well. Now, Francis Schaeffer um, uh, points out that the opposition to the Copernican theory was not based on scripture, but on Aristotle's view. A quote, Fran quoting Francis Schaeffer, when the, Roman when the Roman Church attacked Copernicus and Galileo, it was not because their teaching actually contained anything contrary to the Bible. The church authorities thought it did, but that was because Aristotelian elements had become part of church orthodoxy, and Galileo's notion clearly conflicted with them. In fact, Galileo defended the compatibility of Copernicus and the Bible, and this is one of the factors which brought about his trial." Unquote. So a good synopsis of the Galileo Affair is found in uh, uh, chapter 10 of this great book, Dinesh D'Souza, What's So Great About Christianity. So chapter 10, and you can get uh, some cool knowledge on that. So Gumbel speaks about the Scopes Monkey Trial. Quote, persecution of scientists did not end in the 17th century. As late as 1925, John T. Scopes, a high school teacher from Drayton, Tennessee, that's what he has in the book, was prosecuted for violating the state law teaching the theory of evolution. Gumbel, uh, page 8. There you go. You can get up yourself. So one of the earliest published papers of mine was on the Scopes trial way back in 1979. Uh, the real truth about Scopes trial is found in 
Monkey Business uh, by Marvin Alasky, and he's the one behind World Magazine. Monkey Business, Marvin Alasky, and has some super cool pics in it. And uh, there you go, super cool pics. Um, uh, Monkey Business, Marvin Alasky. Highly recommend it. So that gives you the straight story of the boy named Sue, etc., etc. So, uh, uh, Scopes got dragged into a publicity stunt to promote the town of Dayton. That's D-A-Y-T-O-N. Just imagine you had to shovel a ton of coal in one day. Dayton. D-A-Y-T-O-N. Typo. And the book it came out in 94, but uh, that was the 2016 edition, so they haven't fixed it yet. Okay. Uh, Scopes was no activist for Darwin. He wound up in Venezuela for Gulf Oil. Monkey business is the book to get. So, the supposed evidence for evolution actually given in the trial has all been dumped and abandoned. If George McGreedy Price, who died in 1963, uh, uh, who was quoted at the trial, had been able to appear, the results may have been vastly different. He was the author of The New Geology, which came out in 1923 and refutes deep time. Price was teaching in England at the time of the trial. And now for a word from our sponsor. What do you know about Alex Jones? Uh, uh, does Jones teach the true gospel? Why is he so popular? Find out and get your copy of the gospel according to Alex Jones today. Uh, just search Alex Jones on Barnes and Noble and sometimes it's been the third or the sixth or the seventh or the eighth in the list. Just look for this picture and you'll see it. The Gospel According to Alex Jones by myself and my good brother Jeff Sinclair. So check it out. And uh, I was a journalist for a year and had the privilege to enter my Angelo just to give you a little bit about my background. Now back to the show. So uh, when Nikki speaks of uh, persecution uh, and uh, uh, when, when, we, when he speaks of persecution, he kind of ignores the persecution regarding Darwin doubters, and Darwin doubters, and we wonder if we've seen, if he has seen Ben Stein's uh, movie *Expelled*, which features Richard Dawkins in the finale. So let's go aliens. Uh, for more on the attacks on Darwin doubters, including uh, *Careers Being Destroyed*, see *A Slaughter of the Dissidents* by Jerry Bergman. Uh, and he's just fantastic. Slaughter of the Dissidents. There we go. Slaughter of the Dissidents. And guess what? There's not just one sequel. There's two sequels. And they're equally uh, thick as well. So uh, get your copy today. Uh, for 17 years, Dr. Kurt Wise, that's W-I-S-E, taught at Bryan College in Dayton, Tennessee. That's D-A-Y-T-O-N. Um, he earned a Ph.D. in paleontology at Harvard and studied under Stephen J. Gould who passed in uh, 2002. Uh, the first edition of Nikki's book came out a while ago, yet that typo has not been fixed. I take it as a sign that many people do not. Do your own research. Do your own research, Dior. Of course, we're talking Christian Dior. And so, I uh, highly recommend you do that. So, they do not consider the research from Answers in Genesis, uh, Institute for Creation Research, Creation Ministries International, Creation uh, research society and I have those links in my yes blog uh, check it out and kind of hear what the other side has to say so back to page nine out of uh, brother Nikki's book here and we got Nikki says about miracles it is argued that the assured results of modern science are in direct conflict with the teaching of the Bible some would say for example that modern science shows that miracles do not happen whereas the Bible is full of miracles unquote so Brother Nicky should look into The Case for Miracles by Lee Strobel, known for The Case for Christ. I highly recommend the movie if you have not seen that. So The Case for Miracles, Lee Strobel, excellent, excellent work. He has an interview with the famous skeptic Michael Shermer, and that is worth the price of the book, in my opinion. So Brother Nicky goes universal on us. Quote, mathematician and physicist and astronomer Galileo Galilei was the founder of modern mechanics and experimental physics. He argued that the Earth was not the center of the universe. Notice how he's mixing different issues up. So that's on page 12. In the Journal of Creation, physicist uh, Russell Humphreys wrote a paper providing evidence that the Milky Way is near the center of the universe. 
So check that out. Nikki quotes uh, Richard Dawkins, quote, God almost certainly does not exist. Is Gumbel aware of the 1986 Oxford Union debate uh, between Dawkins and creationist A.E. Weldersmith, who had three earned doctorates? And that is documented in my book, uh, Biological Essentialism. And there's a book with the exact same title uh, from Oxford University Press. My book came out two years earlier in 2021. So check that out, Biological Essentialism. And so uh, what was the results of that debate? I'm glad you asked. So the verdict was 115 or maybe 150. That's uh, up for debate and uh, votes for the creation side and the two Darwinists got 198 not exactly a wipeout so Nikki rightly points out that science has a Christian basis he gets into that on pages 9 through 11 uh, God gave us wisdom to understand the equations of creation and that's uh, that's what we're looking at so we need to understand the equations of creation for example in Jeremiah we read this this is what the Lord says if I have not made my covenant with day and night and established the laws of heaven and earth, then I will direct, uh, reject the descendants of Jacob and David, my servant, and will not choose one of his sons to rule over the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will restore their fortunes and have compassion on them. Jeremiah 33, 25, and 26. One example of science in the Bible is the expanding cosmos. He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth and its peoples are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy, Isaiah 40, 22. Well, a circle from all perspectives implies a sphere. There it is right behind me, the sphere of the earth. There you go. And so another one is, He alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the ways of the sea. He is the maker of the bear and Orion and the Pleiades and the constellations of the south, Job 9, 8, and 9. So another verse about the expanding cosmos and there are several other that I mentioned in my in my blog that you can check out so uh, Nikki presents uh, Isaac Newton as an example of believing scientists of a believing scientist and there it is page 12 and Newton held that uh, mankind existed around for 6,000 years so uh, throw him into the young earth camp I think Gumbel quotes physicist turned theologian John Polkinghorne who also said, quote, if the deeply seated congruence of the rationality present in our mind with the rationality presented in the world to find a true explanation, it must surely lie in some more profound reason, which is the ground of both. Such a reason would be provided by the rationality of the Creator, unquote. So that makes perfect sense. So Nikki uh, plugs Francis Collins on page uh, 15 and also 31 uh, sadly in Beverly Hills in 2006 Dr. Ben Carson was part of a panel discussion on evolution along with Richard Dawkins Daniel Dennett and Francis Collins Dr. Carson opposed evolution Dr. Carson received the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2008 amazingly Collins has apologized for the lockdowns so good for him will the miracles never cease so uh, good for uh, Dr. Collins. On page 16, Nikki mentions David Hume, who actually passed in 1776. Hume surprisingly gave the young earth view a fair hearing. Uh, see my book, Is a Young Earth Possible, that I referenced earlier. So, you can go to my site, Early and Often. We greatly appreciate it. And that's just totalyouth.us, totalyouth.us. We appreciate that. There's also a merch page. And uh, thanks for watching Younger Today 2030. Alpha versus Beta, beta got sci-fi. Uh, please like and subscribe. Have a great day.